Need a new heart or liver? Science is making spare parts for humans. The whole idea of tissue engineering is how do you get those cells to actually form the tissue and to carry out the functions of tissue. The directions for a human being are written in code, three billion letters long. These instructions tell our bodies how to live, how to grow, how to die. Researchers call this code the sequence. Welcome to Secrets of the Sequence. I'm Lucky Severson. In Greek mythology, Prometheus stole fire from the other gods and gave it to mere mortals. As punishment, he was chained to a rock where every day an eagle came and ate his liver. The striking thing about the story is that his liver always grew back overnight. Well, today, medical researchers are trying to develop that Promethean ability to regenerate kidneys, hearts, intestines, you name it. I'll name it, Lucky, while you get your head out of the mythological clouds. It's called tissue engineering, and it refers to the use of human cells to restore, maintain, or repair human tissue. This may involve skin, muscle, or bone tissue, or it may involve the regeneration of an entire organ, such as the heart, kidney, or yes, the liver. Tissue engineering is not synonymous with genetic engineering, although it may include the use of embryonic stem cells and organ cloning. We're talking about science here, Lucky, not mythology. You've got the imagination of a cash register, but thanks for the effort. The promise of tissue engineering is enormous, especially for whole organ replacement. Because the supply of donor organs just cannot keep up with demand, organ replacement has become a major goal. The U.S. Defense Department is funding research into a broad range of tissue engineering for wounded soldiers, from bone, muscle, and skin to vital organs, including the heart. Engineered tissues could save a lot of lives. But just how do researchers go about doing this? Well, first they get some cells. Typically you have a donor material that may be the patient's own cells. Cells may also come from another source. The whole idea of tissue engineering is how do you get those cells to actually form the tissue and to carry out the functions of tissue. Cells may have some memory of what they're supposed to do, but they also need structure, nutrients, and oxygen. Structure comes from what's called a scaffold, and they come in many, well, sizes. These are biodegradable polymer scaffolds for ears. And this is a scaffold for a finger. The scaffold gives the cells a structure on which to grow. Without a scaffold, the cells are free floating. They can't connect with each other, communicate, and form tissue. With a scaffold, they have structure that they need for a certain period of time until they formed enough tissue to have their own structure. When that happens, the scaffold dissolves. These are tissue engineered ear cartilages for babies. With FDA approval, engineered tissues like these could be used to correct birth defects. Cartilage specifically is, is one of the easier tissues to create because cartilage cells themselves do not need a lot of oxygen. Um, and in terms of the nutrients, they can receive them by diffusion. They don't need much of a vascular supply or a blood supply. Linda Griffith's lab at MIT has developed another kind of scaffold for liver regeneration, a liver chip. It's a tiny bioreactor that grows liver tissue from liver cells. This is the heart of our whole system. The cells live on the silicon chip that you can see inside there. They live in little tunnels through the chip. And when we're growing the cells, there's, it's hooked to a life support system that pumps culture medium in through here, and it flows across the surface of the chip and it flows out this exit here. So this is essentially the equivalent of an artery in an organ, and this is the equivalent of a vein. Fluid comes in, gets consumed, oxygen and so forth, and then comes out here. The liver chip lets researchers study how living tissue reacts to diseases of the liver and drugs to treat those diseases. Draper Labs in Cambridge, Massachusetts is using silicone chips to create intricate scaffolds for blood vessels. That's because a vital organ needs a constant blood supply to remain vital. A complete network of blood vessels from arteries to microscopic veins. The idea is to engineer a blood supply first and use it to grow a complex organ like a human heart. 
The ultimate goal of tissue engineering is to replace a structure with a completely living structure that is not biohybrid. Biohybrid means it's part living and part mechanical. Ultimately, the best way to replace a heart is with a heart that's completely living. Tissue engineers try to imitate what nature does to create successful tissues and organs. This experiment involves engineering a kidney. Instead of using artificial scaffolds, these researchers are using nature's own collagen. In this particular instance, what we have done is we have actually taken real tissue and we have taken all the cells out of the tissue, leaving only the collagen behind, the scaffold, the architecture. And then what we have done is to seat cells back onto the scaffold, so to regenerate the organ, but using the organ's same architecture. Collagen makes up a lot of the connective fiber and architecture of the human body. Although engineered skin, cartilage, and bone have been around for some years, engineering living tissue for organ repair and replacement is still a work in progress. Many researchers and scientists are hoping to use human stem cells in tissue engineering. They can be used to make any tissue in the body. The cells know what to do. The cells know exactly what to do. All you have to do is put them in the right environment. They have all the genetic material necessary to become what they will become. So all they need is to have the right cues. Recently, researchers at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology grew functioning blood vessels out of human embryonic stem cells that could prove an ideal means of tissue regeneration. The secrets of the sequence teaching materials were developed at Virginia Commonwealth University with funding from the National Academy of Sciences and the Pfizer Foundation. The original public television series, Secrets of the Sequence, was produced by Ward Television with funding from Pfizer, the Pfizer Foundation, Oracle, and the Council for Biotechnology Information. Special thanks to member institutions of the series advisory board, consisting of Virginia Commonwealth University, Harvard University, University of Wisconsin, University of Michigan, University of California at San Francisco, and the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology, Cambridge, England.